Hey, cooking peeps. I hope you had a good time watching the Restaurant Depot tour that I did. Um, I thought it was kind of fun in there. So now I've got a big piece of meat. I got a big ribeye. It's like 17 pounds and guess what? I can't eat it all at once. So we're gonna be cutting it up. We're gonna be food saving it and throwing a good portion in the freezer. And who knows, I might have a little sandwich somewhere. But please join me as I take and show you my whole ribeye, cut it up into different pieces and have fun doing it all, right? Right, Boo? Yeah. Ah. All right, if you guys guessed that I was gonna get me some ribeyes, then you were right. Um, this is a ribeye, whole ribeye. Um, this is, Huge. This is 17 pounds. It's about 18 inches long. I'm used to eating a ribeye steak that's maybe inch, inch and a half thick. You know, supermarkets usually don't have a good selection. You know, you can cut these things as thick as you want. That's the beauty. And when you go to the supermarket, you're stuck with what they got, right? And um, it's slim pickings there. Um, I got a couple of pictures here to kind of show you that. Slim pickings. Uh, only got a couple pieces there. Uh, they're thin. And then they got one that they say is thick. But of course, it's not all that even. And uh, it'll be tasty, but it's just a mess. But here, you can buy one of these guys, cut it up into one and a half inch steaks, and, and that's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, and then maybe cut a couple pieces really thin that you can have for sandwiches or something convenient. Um, and that's the beauty. So to my buddy Wayne, who had no idea these things existed. Yep, here it is, buddy. So I uh, hope you enjoy this. And uh, if you can track one down, good for you, especially with your new freezer you're getting, right? Because uh, you're going to need to carve these bad boys up and then uh, food save them, which is what we're going to be doing. Um, on the back, we have like a fat cap here, and we also have some silver skin looking stuff. You're familiar with silver skin when you're doing ribs, right? Because they have it. Uh, not all rib places pull them. Why? Because it's a lot of work. This actually pulls pretty easy. I just got the knife, started it. Um, I'm not a big fan to like remove all the fat and everything. You want to just trim it um, to whatever works for you. Maybe an eighth of an inch thick or something. Fat is flavor, but in this case, we just have all this loose junk here, right? And I just want to go ahead and get rid of it here. So I'm just basically pulling it. Um, this meat does not come trim, right? We pretty much established that. If you want a full size uh, butcher, go for it. But you're probably not going to get a piece of meat like this. If you do, that's going to cost you a house payment. But if you want to do it yourself, get your hands dirty. We just go ahead and trim away some of the stuff. And uh, we just have a good time. So um, I'll be back after we uh, get this bad boy trimmed and I get in the freezer so he can do a little chill. <laughs> Fun part now, right? We get to hack up this beautiful piece of meat here. First of all, I did just take it out of the freezer. It was in there for maybe 45 minutes, not enough to freeze it, just enough to tighten up a little bit. I'm just keeping it simple. I'm gonna cut a six inch roast, which is roughly this much. I'm gonna cut little one and a half inch steaks. And then once I get down to this part, I'm gonna cut little half inch pieces so I can make some sandwiches out of, right? Because I can't get them anywhere. So with that said, this is a 14-inch Victorinox knife. 
Um, it's great for cutting roast beef and all kinds of other stuff. Just keep it sharp and it's good, right? I just sharpen it. Let's get going. I ran a tape measure <laughs> to mark my cuts here, but uh, it's just me, right? So I'm not too worried here. All right, so there's our roast. Um, so this is probably gonna be obviously tender part in here. Um, you got different fat areas, which um, like this meat here might be a little more tougher, but flavorful because there's a lot of fat involved. This here is probably gonna cut, you know, fall apart and stuff. This might be a little more um, potentially tough where this is, you know, the, uh, what everybody wants, right? I guess it's like a pork chop or something where everybody wants a center cut and the other stuff is scrap. Look, ribeye is great, I really don't care. It's a roast, I'm gonna probably smoke it and it's gonna come out wonderful. Steaks are gonna be wonderful as well. Minimal flavoring, right? Salt, pepper, maybe onion and maybe garlic. Keep it simple, right? Number two. And these little guys we're just gonna go ahead and cut into uh, some thin pieces. We'll go ahead and move it off a little bit so I'm not on the edge. Gotta be careful this stuff's gonna fall apart on me here, so I'm just gonna Leave it as is. Um, the fat's barely holding together there. All right, for this last part, we uh, brought out the big guns here. This is Amy's uh, Cuisinart electric knife. Uh, we've used this on some comps, just because once again, when you're dealing with certain meat and you want a really nice clean cut, sometimes you don't want to be fighting things. This is a very thick meat, even though it's tender to a degree, right? it still has wiggle room and it's kind of falling apart here on the edge. I don't want to deal with that. I just want to make my job simple. That said, plus I'm filming this, right? I mean, if I'm just doing it myself, I'd probably do things on the right, but I want to do it on the camera for the left and I'm not exactly left-handed. So can I squeeze a button with my left hand? Ooh, it works. So once again, big cuts here, so. All right. Now, keeping our hands out of the way. This is not a long enough blade. <laughs> so in a perfect world, I would probably cut this stuff limited and then, but um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a command decision here. This meat here is good. I can throw this on the, on the grill and everything. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. We're gonna keep that, because that's beautiful. The rest of this is still good, and it's almost about the size of what the knife can handle, so we'll do good with that. So let's continue with the show. Doing the best job here. Knife did a wonderful job. User error. Just going to clean this up. Ooh. And we're done pretty good. Uh, this guy's a little thicker. So he's um, 
thicker than a sandwich, not as thick as a steak, somewhere in the middle. I guess I'll just have to live with it. I'm really not going to risk, uh, you know, harming or anything. So let's take a look at all the pieces I just cut here. All right. Um, now that I got everything all hacked up, you kind of want to see everything all together. So here's the thick cuts here. Um, you can kind of see this guy was the guy at the end. So he's a little off. This is a single thickness. These are two guys and two guys here. They look really nice. So this is what I was telling you about. This is probably going to be the most tender uh, part. And, you know, it's flavorful. This is what we want, right? This might be called center, center cap. I love these things. This is probably one muscle separated by fat. This is another muscle separated by fat. These guys are a little tougher. All kinds of examples. Cut them up and set, you know, use them as fajitas, whatever. Don't throw them away. You don't really need to. Bottom line is if you cook this thing properly, you can eat it all. You could probably trim some of the fat off. Everybody says fat is flavor. The problem is too much fat's not a good thing. Rumor has if you cook this at a high heat, this might curl up on you. Then that gets to be ugly. Then it ruins a good steak. So you might need to trim it off. Otherwise, trim it off, cook it separately, keep this guy by himself, cook him uh, to a rare or medium rare. And then these guys, you might need to cook a little bit higher to, um, you know, get them a little soft. Who knows? Worst case, cook them in the oven and then finish them on the grill. It's up to you. There's different ways. Sous vide them and then grill them. Grill them and sous vide them. It's however you want to do it. There's many different ways. This is USDA choice. Decent marbling. There's going to be flavorful. If it was prime or Wagyu, there'd be a lot more marbling and it'll cost a lot more. These are the thin cuts. See? Somewhere around a half inch or so. These things would be great on sandwiches, panini, whatever. Just grill them up, throw them on a sandwich, you're done, right? So, yeehaw. Don't need to go out to a burger place. Do it here at home. Save money and enjoy it your way. This is our roast. Roughly six inches, at least this end. This end's not quite, but oh well. I'm not trying to impress anybody. Look at that meat there. Isn't that pretty right there? Got some fat, got marbling and stuff. Once again, this will be the pretty stuff. This stuff you can argue and cut off a little bit of that fat. But the bottom line is fat is flavor. So try to leave as much intact as you can. This guy here, he was a casualty. Look at him, he's pretty, right? I'm gonna throw him on the smoker when I throw that big guy on there, right? I'll pull him off sooner and I'll munch on him while I'm thinking of the big guy. So you don't have to throw everything away. It all has flavor. I trimmed the bottom of the fat cap down and I removed the silver skin and it, a lot of this stuff just pulled off. Some people cringe. If you want to keep that fat and you want to flavor something with it, fine. If you're going to cook a big roast, maybe turn it upside down so the fat cap's on top and it might, you know, like barbecue, right? The fat moisturizes the rest of the meat, but there's enough internal fat in here. This is not going to dry out. So some people that want to keep fat, flavor, keep it. Some people want to trim it off because um, seasonings can't penetrate fat. Hmm. It's up to you. I'm in the middle. I left a decent amount intact. I might trim a little bit out before I cook it, but I'm not going to kill it right now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, vacuum pack and freeze this because this is a lot for me. Most families obviously keep out what you can, cook them up, and what you don't, freeze, okay? It's not a big deal. And um, I have plenty of sandwich material over here, so I'll be enjoying that. So, yeehaw. If you enjoy this video, please give us a thumbs up and a like, and visit our website at www.amylearnsacook.com, and we're also on Pinterest and Twitter at Amy Learns a Cook, and we're on Instagram at Cookin with Amy. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, found it useful. And for those of you who did not know that you can get a big 17 or even with bone in, maybe 21 uh, pound thing of ribeye and cut it up however you want and you're no longer up to the store to do it for you, you do it however you want. It is possible. Okay? And practice makes perfect. But this is a wonderful cut of meat and ribeye is one of my favorite food groups. I love it up there with 
Reese's peanut butter cups <laughs> and ribeyes. Those are probably my two favorite foods. Handle your business. Come on. Can we say the magic word, please? Action. Thank you. What am I doing now? Thank <laughs> you.